Hello, in this presentation video I will be talking to you about the rendering possibilities of the uh, shape grammar of the shape grammars, uh, about the different tools and options used during the rendering process. I will um, use a small example and again uh, all the details on the, um, the rendering process can be found in the, either in the dynamic help there is a small description or in the uh, help document under executing shape grammars. Um, okay, let us immediately start with a small example. We will create a new shape. Let me close this help window. Uh, help square. View new square. Uh, it will be the very well known uh, grammar used in the previous examples. We create a new addition rule called add uh, square to square, for example. And we add this square to the left side and to the right side of the rule. Remember the grid. And now we can proceed to the rendering. Okay. What uh, options we have? We first can select the type of protocol we want to use. The first two are tree-based search protocol. Uh, the second one is the amount of randomization we want to use. We can select, we can choose if to use or not to use markers. A little bit on that later on. The amount of uh, iterations used during the process. This button uh, renders all the iterations, all the number of iterations specified in this previous window. This is a step uh, uh, step rendering, so it will be rendering step by step. This resets the rendering process and we can export uh, the rendered shape into some graphical format such as BMP, GIF or JPEG. Okay, so if we just leave the default options on and we render 10 passes, we see uh, that uh, we have rendered 10 square following the uh, addition, mm -hmm. uh, addition rule. If we go to a subshape detection and we render all the passes, lasts a little bit longer, but we see that uh, we have used the emerged shapes uh, as a... So now we'll be using this, this emerged uh, rectangle and use an addition rule on it. Okay, if we want to disable the use of this, uh, these squares which emerged on the, by the, inter the intersecting of the two previous shapes, we can use markers. How to use markers? We open the shape definition, we click on the marker addition tool, we add a marker and we add it in the middle. What it means in the rule? Basically, the marker is placed here in the in the middle of the square. And that means that uh, there will be no marker in the middle of the of this intersection, so it won't be using the this emerged uh, uh, squares. So if we go now with markers, we see that this emerged rectangles are not used, but this big rectangle, it appeared because we have joined these four squares together, now appeared this big, big rectangle and we have a marker in the middle. So it was, uh, it was possible to use this, uh, this square again. We can decide not to use the markers and we get the result very similar to, to, uh, to what, uh, when we had no, no marker uh, in the shape. Okay, so if we now go, if we do now don't want this, these markers appear in the rendered shape, we can go to uh, preference page of SGI where we can unclick the show markers during presentation. Okay, a um, little bit more on the randomization issues will be, we will add two new rules. First, let me add a new, new shape. We will be adding a new rectangle. Okay. Create this rectangle. And we add the two new rules. The first one will be add square to rectangle. 
and the other one will be add rectangle square. Let's select that one. Now we leave the add rectangle to square. We add rectangle to square. So square will be on the left side. And rectangle will be on the right side. As we see, we have this this marker not visible. We turn on the grid and we edit like this, for example. And uh, in the add square to rectangle, and we put the rectangle on the left side. We put a square on the right side. And we add it like, for example, in this. Okay. Now, just for the display purposes, we will delete this marker. Uh, no, yeah, we'll delete it. Okay, and now we can proceed to the render. So. We reset this process, we keep the breadth first search, we leave the depth of the 10 passes, and by clicking on the basically render button, it gives us all the time the same, uh, same options, same, same results. So if I go now to Randomization, we set the randomization to medium, and now we get let's go to we get very different results depending on the uh, the protocol we have. So if we go to high extreme for example randomization, we get different results. If we go to depth first search with the randomization on, we again get Different results for the for the uh, for the output, and in the subshape, we have much different results, as it's using the image shapes. Some are actually quite interesting. Okay. Um, for the last part, if you want to uh, know what is actually happening in the system, we have these two two windows called the debug tree and the debug view. They both kind of slow down the um, the rendering process, but in the so do not leave them on when you are like doing some heavy rendering and or so. But you have some messages from the render process saying. Uh, where uh, where the shape was detected and what kind of rule will be used, and the debug tree is uh, more interesting. In the subshape detection, it's not interesting at all. But during the breadth first search and depth first search, you can watch how the tree is constructed. So you have your initial um, uh, shape, which is our square. In the next phase, we have two possible rules to be executed, and the first one is uh, add square to square or add rectangle to square. Uh, that's just another randomization for the game purposes. And then it decides to um, select the uh, add square to square. Now it executes this rule as it is uh, the rest of the search. Now it executes this rule and so on, and that's how it constructs the shape. And then if we go to depth first search, we see that it will be going into the depth of the tree to produce uh, different results. Okay, well, thanks for listening. I hope it's so much clearer and uh, have a wonderful day.